Hello, I am Pastor Jennifer. Let us think about another thing to overcome, which is a hardened heart that does not respect others. Those who are kind and pure in heart feel touched and grateful easily. They try to help those in need spontaneously. One more thing they do well is to show respect or reverence to those who deserve it. The opposite is disrespect or irreverence. As far as respect is concerned, we find a great example in the Bible. It's David. His life was not flawless, but his respect toward King Saul, his lord, never failed. In 1 Samuel chapter 25, David goes down to the wilderness of Paran. It is after Samuel died. Samuel is a man who was dedicated to the Lord by his mother Hannah as a child and served him for the rest of his life. David was anointed by him as the second king over Israel when King Saul was still on the throne. Was David's life a flowery path because he was anointed as king? No, it was not. King Saul started to see him with suspicion as people praised him for great victories over the Philistines. Feeling threatened, Saul even had tried to kill David several times. Even Samuel, his spiritual mentor, is dead now. Even so, David did not try to kill Saul in revenge because he respected him as the anointed one, honestly. There is another episode in chapter 26. A brave and royal man said to David that he would kill Saul for David at once with a spear. Then David said, Do not destroy him, for who can stretch out his hand against the Lord's anointed and be without guilt? Even when he heard the report from a man belonging to Saul's camp that he helped Saul die, in the battlefield, he reacted out of the same respect. He ordered others to execute the man for what he did, saying, How is it you are not afraid to stretch out your hand to destroy the Lord's anointed? His loyalty and fidelity toward King Saul is of course noteworthy, but what he should be more greatly commended for is his unchanging respect for God and the one he anointed. For that, he even risked his life. On the contrary, we see in the same chapter one who is of a total opposite character. He is a rich man named Nabal, who is said in the Bible to be harsh and evil in his dealings. Here is the story. David heard in the wilderness of Paran that Nabal was shearing his sheep. So he sent ten young men to him for some food. Nabal, who was harsh and evil, ignored the request, ultimately David's request completely, saying, Shall I then take my bread and my water and my meat that I have slaughtered for my shearers and give it to men whose origin I do not know? In fact, David and his men had kept neighbor's sheep and his shepherds unharmed by being a wall to them by night and by day. However, all that they received in return was just scorn. So David determined to attack Nabal and his household armed. One of Nabal's men told Nabal's wife about all things. His wife named Abigail was both beautiful and intelligent. After hearing all that, he left for David with things her husband should have given him at first, or much more than that, not telling him. Verses 23-31 to 31 show us how much respect he had for God and God's anointed one. Seeing David, she hurries and dismounts from her donkey and falls on her face before David. She then begged him to neither pay attention to her husband a foolish and worthless man, nor shed blood by his own hand. He continues to say with full assurance that God will protect David's life while destroying his adversaries himself. 
What an amazing word of faith and respect. David eventually accepts a request and gives up avenging. He even praises God for Abigail. Meanwhile, Nabal, who ignored a small request from David, the anointed future king, holds a feast in his house for himself, a feast of a king, got very drunk, and ten days later, he faces the most terrible moment in his life. God struck him himself, and he died. That way, Nabal, with a hardened heart, lost everything by looking down on God and his anointed one instead of respecting both. In addition, he came to be remembered throughout the history as a harsh and evil man, as well as a worthless and foolish man. On the other hand, Abigail, who showed pure respect for God and for the Chosen One, becomes the wife of David, the second king of Israel. The core foundation for this relationship is their common respect for God. Let me share from now seven categories of Bible verses on a hardened heart or a stubborn heart. First, times when God the Sovereign Lord allows a hardened heart with a good intention. Exodus 11.10 Moses and Aaron performed all these wonders before Pharaoh, yet the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he did not let the sons of Israel go out of his land. Psalm 81.11-12 but my people did not listen to my voice, and Israel did not obey me. So I gave them over to the stubbornness of their heart to walk in their own devices. Romans 9, 17-18 For the scripture and says to Pharaoh, For the very purpose I raised you up, to demonstrate my power in you, and that my name might be proclaimed throughout the whole earth. So then he has mercy on whom he desires, and he hardens whom he desires. Second, times when Israelites were stiff-necked before God against his will. Exodus 33, 3 Go up to a land flowing with milk and honey, for I will not go up in your midst, because you are an obstinate people, and I might destroy you on the way. Judges 21:25. In those days there was no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. Second Chronicles. Zedekiah king of Judah also rebelled against King Nebuchadnezzar, who had made him swear allegiance by God. But he stiffened his neck and hardened his heart against turning to the Lord God of Israel. Third. A hardened heart observed in the New Testament. Matthew 13, 15 For the heart of this people has become dull, with their ears they scarcely hear, and they have closed their eyes. Mark 3, 5 After looking around at them with anger, grieved at their hardness of heart, he said to the man, Stretch out your hand. And he stretched it out, and his hand was restored. Mark 16, 14 Afterward, he appeared to the eleven themselves, as they were reclining at the table, and he reproached them for their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they had not believed those who had seen him after he had risen. Fourth, Consequences of a Hardness of Heart Exodus 13, 15 It came about when Pharaoh was stubborn about letting us go, that the Lord killed every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both the firstborn of man and the firstborn of beast. Jeremiah 11.8 Yet they did not obey or incline their ear, but walked each one in the stubbornness of his evil heart. And therefore I brought on them all the words of this covenant which I commanded them to do, they did not. A hardened heart of King Nebuchadnezzar, Daniel 5, 20 to 21. But when his heart was lifted up, and his spirit became so proud that he behaved arrogantly, he was deposed from his royal throne, and his glory was taken away from him. He was also driven away from mankind. 
and his heart was made like that of beasts, and his dwelling place was with the wild donkeys. He was given grass to eat like cattle, and his body was drenched with the dew of heaven, until he recognized that the Most High God is ruler over the realm of mankind, and that he sets over it whomever he wishes. Fifth, warnings against and advices concerning hardness of heart. Deuteronomy 15:17-11. If there is a poor man with you, one of your brothers, in any of your towns in your land which the Lord your God is giving you, you shall not harden your heart, nor close your hand from your poor brother, but you shall freely open your hand to him, and shall generously lend him. Sufficient for his need in whatever he lacks. Beware that there is no base thought in your heart, saying, "The seventh year, the year of remission is near, and your eye is hostile toward your poor brother, and you give him nothing. Then he may cry to the Lord against you, and it will be a sin in you. You shall generously give to him, and your heart shall not be grieved." When you give to him, because for this thing the Lord your God will bless you in all your work and in all your undertakings. For the poor will never cease to be in the land. Therefore, I command you, saying, "You shall freely open your hand to your brother, to your needy and poor in your land." Deuteronomy twenty-nine, eighteen to twenty-one. So that there will not be among you a man or a woman or a family or a tribe whose heart turns away today from the Lord our God to go and serve the gods of those nations. That there will not be among you a root bearing poisonous fruit and wormwood. It shall be when he hears the words of discourse that he will boast, saying, "I have peace, though I walk in the stubbornness of my heart." In order to destroy the water land with the dry, the Lord shall never be willing to forgive him, but rather the anger of the Lord and his jealousy will burn against that man, and every curse which is written in this book will rest on him, and the Lord will blot out his name from under heaven. Then the Lord will single him out for adversity from all the tribes of Israel. According to all the curses of the covenant which are written in this book of the law, Job nine four, wise in heart and mighty in strength, who has defied him without harm, Psalm ninety five seventy eight, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you would hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. As at Meribah, as in the day of Massa in the wilderness, Proverbs twenty-eight fourteen. How blessed is the man who fears always, but he who hardens his heart will fall into calamity. Ezekiel eighteen thirty-one to thirty-two. Cast away from you all your transgressions which you have committed, and make yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. For why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone who dies, declares the Lord God. Therefore, repent and leave. Sixth, aspiration for a pure heart. Exodus thirty-four nine. Seeing disobedience in Israel, Moses said, "If now I have found favor in your sight, O Lord, I pray." Let the Lord go along in our midst, even though the people are so obstinate, and pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take us as your own possession. Deuteronomy nine twenty seven. Moses said, "Remember your servants Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Do not look at the stubbornness of these people, or at their wickedness, or their sin." Psalm thirty one seventeen to eighteen, a lament by David. Let me not be put to shame, O Lord, for I call upon you. Let the wicked be put to shame. Let them be silent and sure. Let their lying lips be mute. 
which speak arrogantly against the righteous with pride and contempt. Seventh, restoration by God. Isaiah 46, 12 to 13. Listen to me, you stubborn minded, for a far from righteousness. I bring near my righteousness. It is not far off, and my salvation will not delay. And I will grant salvation in Zion and my glory for Israel. Ezekiel 11, 19 to 20. And I will give them one heart and put a new spirit within them. And I will take the heart of stone out of their flesh and give them a heart of flesh that they may walk in my statutes and keep my ordinances and do them. Then they will be my people and I shall be their God. Hebrews 10, 22. Let us draw near with a sincere heart in the full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Amen. God's beloved, let us continue to seek a good and pure heart in God every day through word and prayer. This is all for today. Stay safe and healthy. And see you next time.